last weekend, well, man. Well, well, we 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 cut our teeth. We couldn't, you know, necessarily bring that funk like you did. But man, hey, I was glad to hold it down. So we glad to have you back, man. Man, that is so awesome. So I heard you went to the Mecca, the Big Apple. I went to the Mecca. That's right. Down. That's right. So you know, working on some things with my man. Jason Curry, who has been nominated as a uh, a finalist with Junior NBA Coach of the Year. Wow! Yes, Junior NBA, my near and dear. One of the things I actually was a part of when I was at the league as an executive. So, man, that initiative is growing. That's that's legit youth basketball at the highest level. At the highest level, yes. Uh, you know, he is him. Um, someone from San Antonio mm-hmm. and. I believe someone from Memphis. You're, okay. You're neck of the woods. Okay. So Shout they'll be attending a, a private uh, function next next Friday and Saturday. They'll be it'll be open to the the public. But uh, the junior NBA coach semifinalist. So it's it's a, a huge honor, and I'm so proud of Jason Curry and what he's done in Big Apple basketball. And uh, I'm on the board uh, with uh, several other professionals. And as a matter of fact, Kim Hampton. Kim, is, uh, yeah, that's right. Well. That's Absolutely. right. She's uh, on the board, and and we're working on some things. We're we're gonna do a a dinner okay. in November uh, over at Columbia University. Okay. So we you know we're working on some other things, and uh, we might have a partnership with a big church in Queens. Okay. Uh, where we're gonna be doing a basketball tournament okay. and to help raise funds, and it's Excellent. all about the the community. I mean that's the reason why uh, I'm I'm a firm believer in creating this radio show, Power Moves. I'm a firm believer in in supporting nonprofits or even joining boards. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, you know, teaching our youth how to be in control of their own destiny. But also giving, you know, our, our experienced people a chance to lead and to create um, platforms where they can exercise their talent well beyond where they used to be to where they now can pass on that knowledge and give it to the up and coming leaders through basketball, through goodwill, through service, and they in turn help everybody make their power move. Make their power move. So, you yes, know, sir. I, I even have to share. We have to give a big shout out to Dwayne Wade and his podcast as well because he's he's doing some big things. Okay. Yes. And as a matter of fact, uh, my boy that I went to. Uh, 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 Malloy High School with Jason Gilliam Alexander. Okay, okay. He he has a a, a part in the show uh, every Wednesday from seven thirty to eight, which is uh, follow the the, the fingertips. Uh, okay. And uh, and and he talks about you know everything sports and 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 basketball related, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he's he's blossoming. He's also an announcer for the Florida High School Basketball Association. So give big shout out to my man down in South Florida. Wow. Uh, you know, during this past weekend, I was I was busy, man. Okay. I saw my mom. You know, and happy Mother's Day to all yes. the mothers out there. It's a shout big out shout out to the moms. We love you. Uh, could not be here obviously without you. <laughs> That's <but> right. <laughs> at the same time, who we are and who we yet to become has been a big part of at least for me my greatest coach is my mom and still is today absolutely same here and that and that was what's great about you know going up to new york and uh, not only giving back but also being able to spend some quality time with my mother and you know when you spend quality time with your with your mother with uh, for me the biggest gift that she gave me is the gift of belief okay yes you know believing believing in me believing in my dreams because my dreams is her dreams brought to reality right and so uh you know once again happy mother's day to all the mothers especially the single mothers who hold it down because that's the reason why we created the smile experiment which this show is sponsored by serving single mothers and living elegantly and uh you know as a matter of fact it's a nonprofit. and today on today's show we're gonna have uh, two folks that also you know participate in nonprofits. uh Potentially, we should have uh, well, Angel Williams Angel from Williams, the Shine the Firm shine right firm. here in Tampa. That's Tampa's right. one of up-and-coming uh, social impact and philanthropic organizations that really help people who desire to do well in the community do well exponentially. So she's doing her thing. Man. Yeah, she's And she's not doing it just locally here in Tampa. She travels all across the world. So yeah. I can't wait yeah. uh, uh, to have her come through. And Absolutely. the other guest that we're going to have on the show is uh, Tyson Hall. 
He's an actor and a fine arts painter. I mean, and an educator. Uh, currently, right now, he's wrapping up his uh, his time with some kids in Brooklyn, in which he's teaching them art. Okay. With okay. his uh, with his fellow friend, and uh, he'll be coming in. He does a lot of stuff at uh, Art Basel. Every okay. year he participates in that, okay. and 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 he's on a couple of movies and, and the most recent movie, and we'll be help talking to him and and promoting his stuff as well. Uh, while I was up in New York, I got to uh, go to the MLB offices and and uh, have okay. some discussions about us, uh, you know, how we can bring them on the show as well. So we'll, I want to bring them on the show. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the gentlemen that I spoke with. His boss is the head of um, diversity, diversity and inclusion. Re, uh, re, Rene Triago. Yes, oh, yes, yes, that's Don't, right. Hey, man, you hesitated like you didn't think I knew that, man. What's <laughs> up with that? I, I'm, I'm on my stuff. Oh, we have, come on Speaking in. Speaking of the show. devil. Yeah, All right, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we... Which one you want? Which one? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, well, good. I'm gonna scoot over. Yep. 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 We're gonna ladies. Reality yeah, radio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on in. Have a seat here. We are so glad to have you. We'll be right um, on the mic shortly. Let her get set up. So I wanted to, you know, talk about uh, the medallion that we're gonna talk about because it centers on our our guest and the kind of work that she does. One of the things at Pro to CEO is we we talk in the space of leading and and directing and guiding. And it's in the space of uh, helping our clients the best that they can with things uh, that help with their leadership in the area. This today we're going to focus on humility, mm -hmm. um, the humility, the ability to um, humble yourself when everything around you, the fame, the fortune, the access, the opportunity, the capital, uh, the resources are there, but you yet have the wherewithal within you to humble yourself, to learn, to give, to serve, to believe, to share, and to empower others, and to give yourself the very, very best you possibly can in the space of business, um, community, faith, leadership, etc. So there's probably not a person um, since I've moved to Tampa that I have heard over and over I actually heard of her before i actually met her wow and that's serious branding you know how you heard of the iphone uh -huh. before you had an iPhone? iphone this is this is who we got in the chair here <laughs> that's right this that's right of leadership so today we would like to welcome to the show uh the ceo and president i, will, I you might have another term but we have the the head of the shine firm please welcome angel williams angel williams booyah thank you for having me yes yes we're, we're so glad to have you and um one of the things i thought was important about the show today is uh, is to talk about what it means and, and, and tell her the power move uh the philosophy here behind power moves here on the show so the philosophy behind power moves is it's all about where athletes celebrities and key influential executives share how they make money how they attract power and how they earn respect and you know what i enjoy the fact that you're here and i feel so honored is the fact that there's no earning respect there's no gain in power if you're not giving back right right mm -hmm. and you are the person that helps a lot of these key influential executives and celebrities and athletes learn how to give back in a more meaningful way. So could you kind of share with us? Yeah, and, and part of this is we want we want to get to who you are because we think it's real important that people know who you are. So the first question I have is, who is Angel Williams? <laughs> That's right. Who am I? <laughs> Angel is a uh, um, loving, humble servant. Yes, yes. Um, I think early on with my mom being born and raised in Bahamas and being instilling in me the principles of hard work um, and integrity, I think it shaped who I am um, as well as giving back why she didn't have much to give her or have much herself. Um, and so I am, I'm the product <laughs> of a um, very inspirational mother, a hard working mother and, um, and who loves our family and loves helping people. Awesome, awesome. And and to that, I mean, you you are you uh, your siblings yourself, or just just you grow grew up, and how'd you grow up, and, and you know where, and how'd you end up in Tampa? 
So I grew up in Hollywood, Florida. Okay. Um, again, by way of Nassau, Bahamas, my mom came, was going back and forth in most of her adulthood life um, with my grandma and some of her siblings. Is it true? Is, is it better in the Bahamas? <laughs> better in the Bahamas. It's better in the Bahamas. That is definitely true. Um, and so grew up in Hollywood, Florida. Every Christmas break, every summer break, I can remember we were on the plane going back to Bahamas. Mm-hmm. So okay. my mom would not let us forget where we came from, and she wanted to instill in us some of the things that she grew up with and some teachings um, so that we didn't forget <laughs> and right. we understood awesome. some yeah. some key principles growing up. So every break I could remember we were on a plane um, as soon as school got out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Keep going. Keep going. Just just growing up in Hollywood and growing up with a lot of family, um, just it really led me to have a self determination on wanting more and to do more and to be the first in my generation to go to college um, and go on to excel on another level outside of what the norm was in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And so, how did I get to Tampa? Um, so yeah. I, I left Hollywood <laughs> and I went off to Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. That's right. Um, HBCU in the house. Yes. HBCU in the house. Yes. And I studied there. Um, I studied political science, public policy. I wanted to be an attorney. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to help people. <laughs> um, and so after doing that um, and really serving and giving back, um, I realized that nonprofits had a greater calling on my life and helping people in the in the philanthropic space. Okay. And so That's awesome. That's awesome. So why is particularly the space that you're in i mean it's a unique space it's a niche space and for you you've been able to grow your 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 brand in a space how how did you i guess you know one of the questions i had for you was you know how did you you know decide to go into the space that you're in now and explain to us what you know the shine firm is all right so I got into this space because my, initially my best friend was drafted um, early on. So I was working with athletes, um, doing administrative stuff, travel arrangements, just really helping on day-to-day lifestyle things. Um, and then he started a business in Atlanta probably in like 2007 or 2008. And I think when it really hit me, Um, is I was good at what I did and I had been doing it for so long that people kept asking me, how much did I charge? Mm, There you you go. (laughs) And I realized I wasn't charging anything for it. Oh, okay. So so, you was like, hey, So if it's free, it's for me. (laughs) (laughs) You was like, wait a minute. Right. So going through that and um, doing things and not only just doing, helping people do things, but doing it really, really well, Mm -hmm. Um, helping people save tens and 15,000, thousands of dollars. Um, And I realized that there was a there was a space for me. Um, And so that's how the Shine Firm came about. That was the birth of it. Um, Initially, I realized my worth um, and that I can be charging for my services in 2009. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, here we go. So why don't we take a break? That's right. And we'll come back and we'll jump more into who is Angel Williams and the Shine Firm. And the Shine Firm. And once again, this is In Touch Radio, reality radio, where everyone is a star. Please call in 813-444-9588. And uh, we'll have another guest come calling in as well. See you later. We'll be right back. This is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. 
Florida has created more than 1 million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures Scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. You're playing your favorite old school. of jazz you're listening to in touch radio all right we back after the break all right we're back power moves we got a call and we got a caller come on in hello this is power moves who's calling who's on the line this is this is Tyson Hall. How you doing, Power Moves? All right, Tyson All right, Hall. What's, up, what's Tyson? good, baby, baby? Man. Welcome what's to the show, man. What's happening? How are you? Doing great, doing great. Well, you you are live on the radio with uh, Angel Williams with the Shine Firm, and it's appropriate. So, you know, we're going to intermingle you within this show. Um, but as an introduction, real quick, Share a little bit about yourself and and the fact that currently right now you just finished working with a nonprofit. Is that correct? That teaches kids how to a little bit about art. Yes, uh, I am actually. I'm walking out of the classroom right now. Um, oh, you in, you in <laughs> real time? We caught you in real time. <laughs> no, no, I'm for real. Like if you was video chatting me right now, I could show you my students. Like I'm I'm literally leaving like for real. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm native New Yorker artist, fine arts painter, as well as a performing artist. I'm an actor, um, born and raised in the Bronx. Um, you know, got a lot of credits under my belt. Feel good about them. Appreciative. All right, Ali, have a good one. All right, Deja. Hey, um, you know, I just love what I do, man. I'm passionate and I love to give it back to the youth and watch them grow and develop, especially off of my experience and the things that, that I've encountered and what I know. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, I'd like to introduce you to Angel Williams. She's part of the Shine Firm, which helps okay. uh, artists and celebrities and, and key folks to create nonprofits and give them guidance, compliance. And she's going to share a little bit about her stuff. And so during this show, we're going to, you know, sprinkle in a little bit of you, a little bit of her and and, and make nice. things happen. All right. Nice. I love it. What's up, Angel? How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm blessed. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Of course. And thank you for having me. Thank it, you for having me. So I'll jump back in on Angel. Angel, so what? What if you could give us a sense of uh, the type of work you've done? You know, what would be like a cool project that someone would not necessarily know that you were you had done in the past or you have done most recently? And it can be big, small, etc. And and what? Um, and what would give some and, and it would give us a sense of the work that you do all right so locally um i relocated to tampa 2011 2012 and we started a program with so i was brought here to run an nfl players foundation who was with the tampa bay buccaneers at the time mm -hmm. um and we started the foundation based upon providing nutritional meals to student athletes in high schools Okay. Mm -hmm. So we started with two high schools here in Tampa, um, one in South Florida, and that was our start, three schools. Okay, three schools. Um, in it, after probably within the first four years, we were up to about eight schools. Wow. Six okay. here in Tampa Bay, one right. as east as um, Haines City, and South Florida, we were up to three schools. Mm -hmm. so I had about 10 schools under my belt per year. Um, and the goal was to make sure that they had the nutritional meal and snacks that they needed so they could go out and perform their best on the field, awesome. on the court, mm -hmm. um, on the track. We mm -hmm. worked with Wherever. soccer. We worked with football. We worked with girls and boys. Um, mm. We worked with all sports. And so a lot of people may not know the impact that we had on how many schools we had. Sure, sure. But um, that was something that I was very proud of and great, great work to do, especially to connect with the student athletes from so many different walks of life. Yeah, I can only imagine the orchestration that it took behind the scenes to deliver a program not only in Tampa but in South Florida and grow it. You know, that's the kind of work. What kind of things happen and the kind of work that you do that, you know, 
you have to really be strong in certain skills and be able to develop and grow it so you stay in compliance with all kinds of rules and such because people have this ideal about foundations i just want to do good man i don't need to watch the finances or the books and things of that nature what would you say about the work you do that really is you know makes you a pro at it so I'm very thorough. I am very um, big on having the strategy and organization to what it is that you're trying to do, um, mm-hmm. who it is that you're trying to impact, not just for today, but long term. What does it look like in 10 years from now? Mm-hmm. So my my me being a visionary, so to speak, or being able to be a forward thinker, mm-hmm. it puts me in a position to look at 10 years ahead or to look at 20 years from now, as opposed to just looking at the impact of $20,000 today. Right. right. Um, and so that's one thing that sets me apart because it's not just about taking someone's idea and vision and making something happen. Right that's now. easy. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, how do you create something that's sustainable? And mm-hmm. so that's what I focus on. That's what I'm really um, good at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so those are some of the things that I think is important because keeping paperwork and that paper trail is so important. And I think a lot of people miss that because they think that it's just a tax exempt organization and we're doing good. Right. Right. But there are things, um, there are guidelines, there are rules that comes with that tax exempt status. Mm, and so making sure that people understand that is what I'm really big on. And that's the power move to really have that piece orchestrated. So if someone comes digging and looking, you are, certainly able to withstand any type of someone digging into your business because the a lot of these are public um public co- charities okay public foundations public charities in which they are receiving public donations mm-hmm. so that means you have to be very the optics on your business you're wide open for a lot of people to see right and a lot correct. of people don't understand that correct so angel how do you who's your target market you know, like a perfect perfect example is you know Tyson Hall. He's an he's an actor. He's been on many different films, TV shows. Uh, he's also does Art Basel. Um, you know, how do you do you work with folks like that, or is it uh, a certain type of clientele that you look for? Could you share, or is it municipalities? You know, who do you like? Well, I have experience in all those areas, but <laughs> <laughs> um, who my target client is a professional athlete, an entertainer, um, someone who is really busy in their day to day job and they want to give back mm-hmm. because I can bring the structure that they need. And I also can bring the capacity to get done what they need to get done. Mm hmm. And so um, high net worth individuals, large nonprofits that are looking to create strategies for the long term. Okay. Mm. That's my target. Absolutely. So for. (laughs) (laughs) So she can't help a lot of us. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. That's right. You always got to remember. Not yet. The best is yet to come. Not yet. Not yet. (laughs) So now, now Tyson, you know. Do you have your own nonprofit and, and kind of share with us a little bit about, um, you know, your vision and, and what you're looking to accomplish? You know, what's your power move? Um, pretty much it, like it's really geared towards the arts. Um, that's where my passion lies. Um, that's what I feel uh, is my purpose um, that I'm here to serve is to influence in particularly young people in the arts. Um so SOL, S-O-L, is actually an acronym for solidifying our legacy. Mm-hmm. And I started a film festival called the Soul Film Festival in 2004, and I was acquiring film content, and uh, we were holding screening events as well as providing workshops and writing, acting, um, production, things of that nature in Virginia. Um, I ran that for about seven years. And uh, just what the film festival industry has become is is something totally different from when I started. And so now I'm in the process of morphing that into an online um, base uh, production. So I will be acquiring content and really recognizing people who uh, have done significant work in their communities, uh, those particularly of the African-American diaspora, Mm -hmm. and acknowledging them and recognizing them. I feel like that's often an untapped market. I mean, you can be walking past 
there's a gentleman in Harlem that walks the streets and he's very influential and he does really significant work. But a lot of people don't know that he was a Black Panther. And he was locked up when he was 16 as a Black Panther. You know what I mean? And right. he's done so really, really targeting those type of people and giving them a platform to speak about who they are and what they've committed to the community. Awesome, awesome. Great work, great work. And then how did you come about, you know, you know, teaching these kids on Saturdays? You know, on Saturdays, you could be spending time with your own kids, right? Yeah, you know, improving your craft, <laughs> you know, singing, you know, acting, all that. All that. So what what made you decide to do what you what you do today? Um, again, it goes to, to the passion and, and the need. You know, there is such a need. I, I actually do this with a friend of mine. His name is Jamie Hector. He's from out of Brooklyn. You, you can look him up on IMDb or so. He's been on a wire. He's currently on a TV show, Bosch. Um, okay. Yeah, he's, he's a really great work, a really good friend of mine. And he started an organization called Moving Mountains. And um, we're based right here. We're here in Brooklyn, right at Mega Evers College. And uh, he brought me, he's like, yo, Ty, you know, I really need somebody to, to work with these youth. And I've taught before this, but um, he was like, you know, I really want you to be a part of this. And I, I came down, and I, it's just such a need and a void. And outside of actually teaching, um, acting for the business of acting. It's a lot of life coaching that goes into it as well, um, along with mentorship and, and things of that nature. So it really fills a, a, a void and, and a purpose. Yes, it yes you know, it and does. That's why I, I commit. Yeah, that's just why I'm so committed. You know, I just, I mean, I, I almost I, the reason why I called in a, a few minutes late is because I actually had one student who I was just who was given a role, and he was like, I'm not doing this. He dumped out, and I'm just having this long one-on-one -on -one conversation with him outside of the room, like, look, we, you know, this, this, this. It's just, it's rewarding. It's fulfilling. Um, it, it just gives me a real, a real meaning and a purpose outside of anything else. So, yeah, that's, that, that's why I do it. And, that, and that, that's excellent because, you know, I grew up around that area by Mega Evers College because I went to, uh, I mean, I, I lived on uh, Ocean Avenue in, in Flatbush so and played mm -hmm. ball by Ebbets Field, so I know that area very well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, that, so I appreciate what you're doing because there's a lot of us that need that guidance and that need that help. And, you know, which brings me to my next question for you, Angel. You know, how do you go about, you know, because I, when you work with these nonprofits, you also help put out events, right. correct? Mm -hmm. And so how do you procure, you know, when you're working with, whether it's um, trying to get entertainers or whether you're trying to get um, artists to, to showcase some art, to do some donations, what's that like? Connections. <laughs> Relationship building. Um, it's really about building a relationship with individuals in the community and in that market so that they can see the vision of your client, um, the actor, the entertainer, or the nonprofit, so they can really see what is the long-term goal and what you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, and so relationship building is very important to me, but being able to go out and share someone else's vision and to get people on board is something I really enjoy. So. I always mm. do well. That's I think right. That's why I'm able to have a successful company throughout the country. Um, in the country or the world? Well, I guess we'll say rural. That's the humility coming out. That's right, the humility. We are on the way. Um, Absolutely. I had a question. So, what, too. Well, Go ahead, man. So, could you share, you know, because Kevin had mentioned it, but I want you to really drill down on that, is if you were to give a tip to someone who wanted to give back and make that a profession, what what skills this, should they be going after? What skills do they need to have to, to build to make sure that they can work with these executives, these athletes, these celebrities? Because a lot of times, you know, folks want to be a celebrity or athlete and they just don't have it, <laughs> right? However, that doesn't mean that they cannot be within the industry. And so for yourself, you know, I don't know if you had any talents or anything like that, but however, you are a key player with a lot of these athletes and celebrities. So what skills can you impart that you could share that, you know, folks should, should have to be a part of this? 
So one thing I'll be really clear about is the amount of money that people in the nonprofit sector is paid. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you have to understand the market that you're entering in. And I would say you need to bring your heart and Mm -hmm. not your head Mm -hmm. um, for the sake of giving back and making a lasting impact as opposed to coming into an industry to make a quick dollar. Mm -hmm. Um, So the three things I'll leave you with is they need to bring peace Mm-hmm. Patience mm-hmm. and integrity. Mm. PPI. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we getting ready to go on on break once again. Uh, after the break, um, I want you to also answer that same question, Tyson. So once again, this is Power Moves, power where moves. celebrities, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money. how they attract power, power. and how they earn, earn respect. respect. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Demetrius Minor, Director of Community Engagement for Americans for Prosperity Foundation. I want to invite you to a day of encouragement, education, second chances, and opportunity. Admission is totally free. Here's from internationally known spoken word artist Lamont Carey and his focus on helping everyone succeed. Attend a financial literacy course to learn more about improving your personal finances and budget with trainers and financial consultants. Vendors will be available to assist you with job readiness and placement opportunities and programs that are geared towards second chances. Remember, restoration and redemption is available to everyone. This event will be held Saturday, May 18th at 10 a.m. at Tampa Life Church, located at 10930 U.S. Highway 301 North in Dono, Tassasa, Florida. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you there. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins mm-hmm. of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Okay. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new yes. Motivational mm-hmm. Moments at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Smooth Soul is in touch radio. All right, we're back on Power Moves, and we've got a lot more in store, so we're so glad to have you back. Go ahead, Joel. That's right, that's Play right. So, him, so Tyson, man, so you you heard what – so we're making this a conversation going on. So you heard what, what Angel said in terms of skills, you know, what you need to, to you know, excel in the industry that you're in. Now, you, you are yourself – you know, a creator, a curator, you know, what skills can you share, you know, and what you tell your kids that you with that they need to be successful? Um, one of the things that I implement is, is the idea of journey. Um, Mm -hmm. a lot of times we think about here and now, and it's like right here, right now. And, um, with, especially in particular with acting and, and going on auditions and things of that nature, it's like there's so much emphasis placed on the one audition as opposed to what I really try to implement, and that's understanding this career as a journey, you know, and looking at your life overall as a journey. One of the things that have been uh, vitally important for me and has validated me is my proven track record. Mm-hmm. So, so the consistency and commitment to what it is that I do is what validates me walking in the door. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, yeah, so that, that's that been a key thing. Um, what Angel mentioned in terms of operating in integrity um, is very important because it is about relationships, you know, and and what you sow into people and what they what you will reap as well. Um, so that's been something that has really worked for me, being a people's person and being able to operate in that space and, and networking with people, and that has kept me going. I mean, it's, it's the one thing that has sustained me and kept me operating in this business. That's right. Preach that's on, brother. Preach on. 
it's, it's, yeah, no, it's real. You know, it, it's filled. With, you know, this life is filled with a lot of inconsistencies. But if you are able to be a person who can operate with those principles and you know some kind of moral compass and a moral gauge, integrity, um, strength, um, you know, really caring and 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 being somebody who's compassionate about what they do, you you will be able to move on. So those are the things that I think are really key and rudimented in being successful. Awesome, awesome, and thank you for that. And Angel, you have a question for, for Tyson? Yes, Tyson. I would like to know, yes. um, as you operate um, a nonprofit and as you do so much to give back, what are some of the challenges that you face with being the person on the ground, the person operating, um, and the person who's the face necessarily with the organization? It's, um, you know, really time management. Mm-hmm. You know, time management is is really has is is something that you know I am constantly um, having to work towards, and you know, so, you know, sometimes the acting world might not be presenting uh, what it needs to be, and then I'll, I'll be operating in the art world. But just really being able to navigate between you know the two, and then my life, and then you know downtime as well. So time management is something that, you know, I really am constantly in the space of having to um, be on top of. Okay. That's I think, great. I don't know if that answered your question. With it that. did. It did. I think that oh, that's, okay. that's pretty standard. But um, one thing I hear from a lot of nonprofits is that they need more money. Um, but the reality. Oh, that's always the case. <laughs> <laughs> the reality yeah, and what a no-brainer answer. Yeah. <laughs> the reality and what I've learned is that it's not the money; it's the operation and the capacity to be able to distribute the money. So mm -hmm. if you're having challenges mm -hmm. in time management now, as you get the money, there's going to be more work to actually show where the money went. It's going. Mm -hmm. exactly. And so the question is, exactly. are you prepared for the money? So I think your answer was right on what I was thinking. And so thank you for sharing okay. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to flip it back to Angel now since uh, she was such uh, the host here now, <laughs> asked the question. See how we asked our, our guests? They, they, our guests are so talented, bro. We put, right? we put people to work over yeah, here, man. man. That's, that's why it's called power yeah. moves. <laughs> and we're, we're all about, you know, helping each other out so yeah so angel you know this is a question i have and i think this is really one that a lot of people you know about you know when we talk about power moves and people doing their own things we're, we're totally in that space you know people want to be their own boss these days a lot of people feel like it's super super cool and super sexy to say i'm a ceo or i'm a head or a principal i'm the you know leader of this and that and you know we all know that the reality is this is hard work, work. and then some mm -hmm. so i want to talk to you know either both of you all but angel you first you know what are the challenges for you uh of being an entrepreneur who happens to be female and particularly the sports and entertainment industry which is often dominated with a lot of male decision makers mm. Mm. Oh, what a question challenge yeah. challenge <laughs> i'm not challenging you this is, this is a chance for all of us to grow yes. i would say um initially some of the challenges was being secure in who i was um mm -hmm. and understanding my worth and the value of what i bring to the table mm-hmm um, because dealing in a male dominant industry, you also deal with the wives and the mothers and mm. the women that work with these entrepreneurs okay. and these athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to understand and identify who I am and what I bring to the table and be consistent mm -hmm. with That's what right. I bring to the table um has made a big difference um so that was a challenge for me just the insecurities i had within myself knowing my worth mm -hmm. um and then now today i would say um some of the challenges today is just just really trusting the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as simple as it may sound but just really trusting the process that the connections and the opportunities um, that you have before you would manifest into good business. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because all business is not good business. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you right. guys have heard mm -hmm. that before. Yeah. But, Absolutely. but making sure that you understand that, not just to build a business 
and get a dollar, but really to create something that's sustainable and something that mm. in which you can sleep comfortably at night about. Yeah, and, whoa, and, whoa. and I was I was gonna say the same thing for our guest, you know, uh, Tyson. What, what, and hold that, Joel. Mm-hmm. You know, what what are some of the challenges for you? As you know, you're an artist, an actor. Um, um, you you do social impact work, you know, and you, so you're out here doing some real creative stuff. You know, what are the challenges that come with doing the work that you do, and and really competing in a very very heavily desired field like entertainment mm-hmm. and everybody feels like they can they can get that hit record or hit you know become an actor or a superstar mm-hmm. sometimes overnight when you see american idol you feel like man if i could just get there i'm on but you know share right. with us where you where that opportunity is for our audience to learn and grow i think you know i think the key thing is is, and I would say the the greatest challenge is the inconsistency. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not a nine to five. You're not guaranteed a check at the end of two weeks. You know, there's no four hundred one k plan laid out for you. That's right. So there's none of the above. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and and me, you know, growing up in New York is is a hustler's mentality, is what we call it. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and either either you hustling something negative or you hustling something positive and really morphing that idea into a business model and, and you know, doing all the necessary things to, to make it work. Um, I believe in multiple streams of income. So if the art is not happening, the fine art is not happening, then I'm, I'm doing something in the acting world. If I'm not doing something, I'm also a real estate agent, I'm a license, I'm putting in offers for property. So, you know, I, I, I would say the inconsistency is definitely um, the greater challenge as far as the arts are concerned. Um, and I, for each individual, you have to find your way in which you navigate through it. That's that's awesome. And you know, what? I, the couple of things that I picked up what you said is you, you, you focus on profiting off your passion. And that's... that's Say that last thing. That you profit uh, off your passion. You know, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's what, that's what's going on because you said you got to do, you doing whatever it takes, but you know what, you still being you, but you took it mm-hmm. upon yourself to make sure that, you know, you learned other skills to, to monetize, which is, you know, real estate. And that's, that's big. That's real big right there. Um, exactly. And so, exactly. And, and this, this is a question for the both of you. Um, you had mentioned that when you were working with these you know, basketball wives or football, et cetera, et cetera, that there were some insecurities. And especially most recently, you know, Aisha Curry talked about, you know, th- that big topic about, uh, you know, I wish some guys were talking to me and it's been it's been crazy. And me personally, I applaud her for being honest and being real with mm-hmm. that Red Table Talk. But, um, you know, share with us, you know, what were the insecurities? Because, you know, our audience – you know, they're taking notes and we all have insecurities. And when we can figure out from someone else who's successful, how they overcome it, it just provides some motivation and inspiration. So could you share with us, you know, if you want to, this is all right, <laughs> what the insecurity was or, you know, how did you overcome the insecurity? Because that's that's really the most important thing. So I think for me, it was talking more to women um, about some of their initial reactions to me coming to the table or me coming to a meeting mm-hmm. um, and understanding that I'm there about business mm-hmm. and nothing nothing more, nothing less. Mm. Um, and so initially, I think it was more of they don't know who I am. I'm in this space where there are all athletes and I'm the only individual. So not understanding who I was and right. what I do mm-hmm. um, and then making assumptions, often negative assumptions based mm-hmm. off of their own insecurities, their own insecurities, insecurities right? Or their lack household. of research, or information, of- bad information, good, you know, whatever Correct. it was, right? Correct. Or understanding what your per- what what you bring to the table, basically. Correct. And I don't think that there was no open door or open window to address that initially because I'm there to put on a charity event or I'm there to help kids Mm -hmm. or I'm there to Uh oh hold that (laughs) thought we're gonna come right back to power moves where celebrities athletes and key influential executives share share how they make money money. how they attract power power and how they earn earn respect. respect
We'll be right back yeah. All right, after the break. This is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check the way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. All right, all right. So our, our producer had a power question. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to, so uh, Kevin's going to uh, yeah, yeah, state yeah. the question so uh, Angel can, because we only got about 10 minutes and so we need to make sure we are promoting both Angel, the Shine Firm, and we're going to promote my man Tyson Hall. So, so Angel, I mean, we, we have a lot of people and uh, who are listening who want to know, you know, you know, if you're not a big time athlete, artist, executive, you're as the quote unquote producer said, the little guy. Yes, right. And grassroots nonprofit. And you're trying to do the right thing where you are, where you're at, where you're from. You know, what are a couple essential things that people who don't have a whole lot but they have a big heart and they want to do things well, what would you advise that person who wants to get started? That person needs, you know, a real one or two power moves that are going to put them in the right space. And this is something they can really grow on and it will help potentially sustain what they're trying to do long into the future. What would you say? I would say um, strategy, strategy and creating a plan for what it looks like in the long term. It's okay, just strategy. One Strategy is one. And so what a, do you but, mean by that? So when I say strategy, creating strategies okay. <laughs> to sustain. Mm -hmm. um, so a plan of action, a time in action, mm -hmm. um, and really writing down and writing out what it is that you're trying to do, who you're trying to impact, and when. And, and when. And That's outcomes. right. And Amen. With, with attainable outcomes. Correct. Okay. And, uh, then, and then the second part I would say, or the second one I would say is budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. Being very clear about the budget that you have and the budget that you would like to grow to that includes hiring staff mm -hmm. or someone that can help you manage the nonprofit. So, Ooh. in other words, she's saying make sure you got the money for her. <laughs> <laughs> Get your money right. So, so, Get so, your money right. So, 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 Tyson, so Tyson, you know, same thing can for you, you. Can you pay me? That's yeah. right. Can you pay? You know, that's the Brooklyn me. I keep it one hundred. Yeah, you do, bro. Uh, hey, for real though, Tyson. Same for you. What What are two one or two things that you think really people have to really put in their strategy if they're starting if they're small and they really want to grow and get off the couch get going and have some mm -hmm. levels of success what are a couple things they need to do in order to really grow what it is that they in the in the space that you're in in arts and entertainment and acting and it, you, know. you know one i think uh, one of the things that angel has been touching upon um that has been a consistent for me is the long term mm -hmm. um you know and 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 the way i would a way i i find myself breaking that down for people is so that it's not so overwhelming but put together that five-year plan that's right yeah 
That's yeah. right. And then yeah. when you go, and then when you go, and then when you're ready to go beyond that, put together a ten-year plan. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. and, and whichever one works for you, or if not both. Um, and so that you can have order and structure with what it is that you're doing. So, you know, I really mirror that sentiment of, of having that long-term plan. I mean, I think a lot of us, you know, a lot of people at times think of, like I said earlier, the right here and the right now. I want to do this. You know, this is the idea. This is the concept. This is what I'm thinking about. This is what I have in mind. But it's not fleshed out. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and oftentimes you set yourself up for failure just because it's not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, and that's important. So, would you, if you could, give us sort of like how do we how do we consume you, Tyson? How do we, you know, begin to follow you and 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 what things are you going to be putting out where we can really be supportive of what you're trying to do? And 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 obviously we're gonna ask you the same in a second, Angel. So, Tyson, you have the floor, man. Let that's us right. Know. Yeah. What's your and, and and real briefly, what's your what's your philosophy and what what do you want to impart? Um, I, w- I want to impart legacy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and that, and that, and, and okay, so what does that mean? You know, having a purpose in life for which you serve and, and when you're long and gone, what legacy do you leave behind? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I start there with that, you know, because we all do have a purpose. Some people's purposes are more meaningful than others, but nonetheless, it's still a purpose. So be clear with that you know and and open yourself up to understanding what that is you get a lot of people who tap into fields that they just shouldn't be involved with Mm -hmm. you know if you're a good cook at home that don't mean you'll be a good cook in a restaurant because when you have to start making those orders it's a whole different platform (laughs) that's right you know what i mean so that's something that i think is key um and then what was the other part of the question so how do how do people you know, find you, reach you, consume you, you know, the, the brand, oh, yeah. the okay. brand of Tyson Hall. Yes, sir. But you, you go to TysonHall.org is the website, and then TysonHall.org is the Instagram page, um, and then Tyson Hall is on Facebook, you know, if, and, and those are the primary ways of reaching me, you know, once you, once you tap into those, then you got me. But the Instagram is really, really happening faster and more immediate, and that's one of the things that I'm really on and checking more frequent than anything. Okay, and then any projects that you're working on? Could we talked about it early today? Um, if there's anybody coming to the New York area, I'm going to be exhibiting artwork um, on the 18th, May 18th. There's a big event here called Harlem Eat Up. Um, mm-hmm. Which was founded by by Marcus Samuelson of the Red Rooster. Oh yeah, Top Chef Marcus Samuelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do a big event here at Morningside Park. It's called Harlem Eat Up. This is his fifth annual, and I'll be there exhibiting work. And then I also have a tour that I'm running from there to two other restaurants that are housing my artwork here in Harlem. One is Angel of Harlem, um, and then another one. Is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. You should come check it. Um, and then another one is called Corner Soul. You know, so those are uh, on the artistic side. Um, I'm going to be putting a production together uh, for the Moving Mountains, and we're doing that within the end of the, with the at the end of the month. And then, as far as me on the acting side, um, I did a film called Pimp, which is now on Showtime with DMX and Kiki Palmer. So if you haven't checked that, check that out. That's and right. Then, support, support, then, support, Pimp. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah, saying yeah, that you need to be a pimp. Here. Just support the movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just watch it. And then um, I, I'm working on a, a shot something for a project called The Godfather of Harlem that's going to be airing um, this fall. So awesome. busy, busy, busy. That's okay. what's up. Yeah, congratulations, man, yeah. on all your success. Thank and you. keep keep building. Thank Hold you. tight. Yeah. Angel, bring us home. <laughs> Let us know. Tampa nationwide internationally what what is uh your next power power move in terms of how we consume you how we come at you and how we are able to really be a part of helping you grow to be all that you've been called to be absolutely so next moves so um, I'm working with a client that's in New York. He was a New York giant. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely be looking you up, Tyson, um, as yeah, I'll be in the market right. and in the area. Um, Perfect. What's next? The Shine Firm. We have so many good events, really impactful community events coming up in different markets throughout the country. And so I'm excited 
Um, not much to share right now, but if you guys stay tuned and follow us, where our website is theshinefirm.com. Mm-hmm. And then on social media, on Twitter, we're The Shine Firm, T H E S H I N E F I R M. Um, and on Instagram, it's the same in LinkedIn. Um, what do I want to leave people with in legacy? Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. You know, um, Tyson said it all, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay true to what I believe in and what my company stands on. And your legacy matters. Mm. Um, and what you do on, off the field, the court, one, once the camera stops rolling is important. Um, and your dash, mm. what happens in between your dash is very important. And so we are going to continue to help people build their legacy that lasts forever. We are going to continue to help people create lasting impact and events that are going to have a greater impact for generations to come. Mm. And we're going to also continue to educate and facilitate effective strategies um, for nonprofits to sustain. That's right. Sustainability is very important. And it's not just about having an organization for one or two years or doing good things in the community. Um, It's about what that looks like long term. Mm -hmm. And so, one of my quotes that I stand by, I'll, I'll leave you guys with. Please do. Bring it on, bring it on. Break the shine firm. <laughs> bling, I feel bling. like a drum roll is <laughs> coming on here. That, I mean, it guides me every day, and it just keeps me going. But working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. There you go. And we talked about passion today. Yeah, well, I, I like to thank the well. both of you guys for really, you know, blessing us with your presence. Absolutely. And the, and fact, the audience. And the audience and the fact that you guys are so humble, and but you're doing such big things for our community and the community at large. So once again, these are perfect examples of folks that are doing power moves, but they're doing it in silence because they're doing it from their heart. So once again, this is power moves, power moves. with celebrities, uh, celebrities athletes, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, make money, how they attract power, power and how they earn, earn respect. respect. Do you see how these people earn respect, respect. people? Yes. Woo! Come on, y'all. Appreciate In Touch Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Take care.